it's um, that it dumped like this because of, of Twitter or at least the news about it, you know? So, yeah, but sorry, somebody called, so I didn't even listen to what you said because I'm on my phone. Oh, I was just talking about, I, I think there was news about Elon delisting Twitter because he's going to take it private, possibly. Mm. Um, and so I think that's what caused some of this yesterday in the markets. Mm. Um, but NASDAQ is, is tech, like this is technology. So I don't know why technology would have dropped with Twitter. Um, it's kind of weird to me, but I guess Twitter is technically software. Like, you know what I mean? It's internet shit. So maybe that would make sense why it drug fucking ES with it. The yeah, interesting I have, thing. I have a question for you, Tex. What is carbon emissions on being X? What, what I don't is fucking that? know. I have no idea. <laughs> it's the weirdest <laughs> shit. <laughs> I have no idea, bro. Well, I don't know what fuck. it is, but just it just keeps it. going up and up. Yeah, log it, bro. <laughs> and then, I mean, we're getting uh, we're getting more and more CO two emissions. Just log it, bro. Yeah, like the is Russell like, is like is another interesting emissions? one too. Because the Russell, see, this is what was this is what yesterday I was looking at. And I'll get into the class here in just a second, but this is what I was looking at yesterday. That's why I kind of had some faith because the Russell didn't quite reach an equal leg extension here, but it was supposed to. It should have breached this one. And because we failed, to me, all of this says is we're just going to consolidate for a minute and we're going to take another push up. Um, so it gave me a little faith on ES and NQ. But good. I mean, look at this. That's bananas, bro. Mm hmm. That is that's straight bananas, like pure bananas. I mean, this isn't even, yeah, like this is either an expanded flat, but this is my level right now. And I just sent out the alert on this while we were all chilling. If we break above this level right here, we break this high, then my shorts are still valid. And we could see now, I'm not gonna necessarily enter right here at this line because it looks like we're either gonna do. Well, let me see. We'll have to see how high this goes. If this just keeps going, I mean, who fucking knows? We could get something like this, you know? So retest this high here, probably. This this might be valid. But we could also just reject here, do this, and then barely breach the high and just tap the one. So I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with the ES yet. It's pretty interesting. Um, but let me pull up a fresh chart. Real quick. Oh, well, what does ES stand for, really quick? What does, what does it mean? Uh, it's the it's the futures for SPX. They're the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The ES minis, like uh, let's see, <laughs> if you put in ES mm -hmm. E mini S and P five hundred futures. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got your mini Dow, Dow so, also, right? Yeah, so you've got RTY, which is the Russell, right? You got NQ, which is the NASDAQ. And then I forget what the, I don't ever trade the Dow. Yeah, YM. So, um, but I don't, I don't trade the, I don't like these. I'm not a fan of the Dow. So, okay, let's do this. Let's look at BTC USD and let me pull up Bitfinex. Because I can do a lot of shit here. And we can start off. Now, let me say this. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about, I have. I'm going to put some literature together for. And I can like post it in my channel. So some of it may kind of fly a little fast here and there. Um, but I just need to kind of run through my, my setups and really start to explain everything and kind of give people the basic intros to EW. And some of this I've done with a few people before just, you know, bullshit around. But, um, so EW Elliott wave, um, is more of a theory. It's not necessarily a, a principle, although I like to think of it as a principle. Um, and if you research it, it was developed by a guy, uh, Ralph Elliott, who applied it back in the 1930s. Um, he was actually looking to try to apply a theory to help describe human social behavior. Um, <clears throat> and he quickly found that during his research that you could apply it to the markets um, because the markets were driven by social behavior where people interested in buying things or selling things where people, you know, 
did they have a good outlook on the economy? Did they have a, b- a bad outlook on the economy? Right. So that's really where he started to apply it. And he found that all of the markets like to move in these wave formations. Um, and he started to find the correlations in the wave formations and how everything was tied together. Um, and it took a lot of, you know, math equations and a bunch of other things. So thankfully he did all that work for us. Um, we don't have to do that. Um, but the most, uh, I guess, revealing aspect is that he found that there is a relationship between Fibonacci and these wave movements. Okay. Um, and there's two main types of Fibonacci. We have retracement, which is for retracement moves. Okay. So when we retrace a wave and then we have a trend based extension Fibonacci, and that helps us target a zone based on the trend in the direction that we're moving. Right. So they, they actually give you the names of what they are. And we use those same names in Elliott wave, whenever we're trying to describe what characteristics a wave has, right. Is it, going up? Is it going down? Is it a corrective wave? Is it a motive wave? You know, so therefore like a motive is a trend based wave, right? Um, or impulse. A lot of people have heard me say impulse, right? So impulse is technically a motive wave and it's moving with the trend. The trend is up. So these are going to move up. And so to target these, we would use trend based extension, right? Um, when we have a retracement like this type of retracement here, from the motive wave, then we use retracement Fibonacci to help determine levels. Okay. Now, inversely, and it's, this gets a little more complicated, but I'm going to throw this in there. We can determine wave heights of, and some guys saw me doing this earlier when I was fixing my charts. Um, like wave five, we can determine with a uh, 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 retracement Fib. Okay. Um, you can do it with an extension fib as well. Um, I prefer the retracement fib. They seem to be a little bit more accurate because when we're determining how far the motive wave, which is always wave uh, three, the big motive wave is going, um, wave five usually finds resistance. Yes, and so up. the retracement fib um, helps us determine support and resistance levels, whereas this is like more like target zones, right? You can have a support level, but if our extension fib says we're going to go through that support level. I don't even care about that support level because we'll blast through it straight up. Just like all of this year, you know, a lot of people had resistance levels here, 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 right? When we were all sitting down here waiting for this to consolidate over the weekend and doing all its bullshit, you know, there were so many different levels of resistance. Well, my extension said minimum we're going here, right? So I knew we were going to blast through all this. And what did we do? We just blasted through. So um, the market doesn't really care about support and resistance in relation to Fibonacci. Okay. If you set your Fibonacci levels correctly. Um, but that's kind of the foundation of Elliott Wave is, you know, motive. And motive doesn't mean up. Motive just means trend. That's probably the most important thing when it comes to Elliott Wave. Everybody thinks impulse and they think up like bullish, green, blah, blah, blah. No, um, I mean, right now we're in a massive downtrend and these are impulse waves to the downside. This is very, very, very impulsive right here, right? Just the same as this is extremely impulsive here to the upside, okay? So, um, so the basics, and I can, I can post some of my levels and stuff later, um, but Really, we'll start with motive waves. Um, and how does a motive wave work? Okay. Um, and what are the characteristics of a motive wave? Um, you know, what, what do we need to watch out for on a motive wave? How does it retrace? How does it behave? You know, things like that. So um, <clears throat> typically on a motive wave, you have a starting point. I mean, every wave starts somewhere, right? Um, there's really no way to determine where wave one is going to go. Wave one can go wherever it wants to, right? Um, everything is built, the entire relationship on, on the Elliott wave is built on the, uh, excuse me, coffee. Um, it's built on the relationship from our zero point to wave one. And also if we're going to take a corrective wave from the zero point to A or W, right? So this first leg 
is really, really important. And we can get a rough idea of where this entire wave is going to go. And I say rough because there's no exact science to it, right? Like Elliot Wave is not a crystal ball. We're not going to get some exact perfect level up here. But we can get a general idea of how a wave is going to behave and get within plus or minus 10, 15% accuracy on where it's going to go. Okay. So once we establish our wave one, okay, wave two, and this is when we use a retracement. Okay. So wave two is typically going to retrace about 50%, right, of wave one. But it can also go as, I'm sorry, this is upside down. My bad. Wow. I have, I, I don't know why I need to change the setting. I have this inverted. My bad. Um, the 0.5 is still the same, but um, it can go as deep as an 886 if it chooses. Okay. So there's no law in Elliott Wave that says that we can't go deep. So Wave One's always a tricky one, right? So, and that's why you see me use a lot of these boxes. Um, because there's not an exact place for this wave two to retrace necessarily or a wave four or whatever. Um, as we get higher, the measurements get more exact and we can get pretty, like find some really nice confluence. So I, I see a lot of wave ones typically retracing somewhere in 618 to 705 in crypto is just my experience. So we'll just kind of call it like right in the middle here for now. And then once we've established the one-two relationship, okay, and we have a level. So let's say price actually came up and then it came down and we've set our two already, okay? Then we can determine using an extension, right? This is where we determine our target zone for a motive wave by tracing the zero, one, two, okay? And I know, oops, I know that looks a little, a little poopy. Um, but you have to understand I'm like way up here on the really, you know what, here, let me do this lower. Sorry. It's going to look better if I do it lower because the levels look really stupid up there. Um, and it's deceiving. Sorry. Actually, let me do this on an hourly. It'll make more sense. If I do it on a, on a weekly like that, the levels are going to, the visual of it is going to look really crazy. So. Let's just do it at our current zone here. Okay. So let's take our. I need to really change that setting. My bad. Uh, let's do the 705. Yep. I like that. So then what we do is we take. So getting back to where we were. We take our trend based extension. And this gives us the target of the, the motive wave, right? Which wave three. So wave three can sometimes stop here. It can push even higher if it wants. You know, wave threes are impulsive um, and they're described as such for a reason because there's really no saying where it's going to stop. And right now our price action is pretty evident of that. And I'll explain that later. But generally we can say, Hey, we're going to stop probably right around the 618. Okay. Or the 1618, excuse me. Um, and I say generally as in 60, 70% of the time. So it's, it's a pretty reliable extension to take, right? So if we've established one and two already, like price action has already come and we've established this, um, the surefire way to establish that two is in place is by a break of one. Okay. So once we break one, then we can say, or the peak of one, we can say that three has begun, right? Which is also why I'm looking at some of this here, because a break of this peak is going to signal, signal that we're heading into higher prices, okay? Um, but a lot of guys will they'll do an enter at the break of, because if you're truly in an impulsive sequence, Okay, or a motive sequence, um, then this is a pretty reliable trade. Okay, and if you have your extension here, now I don't trade this because the RR is very small, but like for scalpers, this would be a really cool, like you could take a 50X here to the 618 and close out at the 618 
And if you did a 50 X, like you could take, what is that? 4.7. So it'd be a 200% trade probably at 50. X. Right. So, um, this is, um, a very secure and risk-free way to trade it just the rr because i i trade with much lower leverage and higher margin um this is not a good rr for me because at 5x this is only like a 20 percent trade <laughs> like i'm not really trying to risk a bunch of money for 20 percent. that's just me though right so everybody's risk management is different um but this is a super accurate way um a very risk-free way to to take a trade is when you have your basis of the one two relationship, a break of the peak at one is going to give us um, the entry to the top of the 618 here, which we traced from. And actually, here, let me do this. I'm sorry. So you guys can see. Um, it takes, it's kind of funny because I actually have yep. this exact same pattern always drawn out on my charts. So, like, when I see it, I take a trade. It's basically, well, I don't calculate how much the wave is going to be. But whenever <clears throat> I see this pattern, you see, like, uh, the second like the second time it touches the white bar. Yeah. Yes, right here. Yeah. yeah. When it breaks this level, that's when I enter the long. And, and if you look at my, like, uh, my trades, I always use this exact same pattern. <clears throat> well, it's a really nice scalper's territory to do this. Um, and so now, hopefully, if you know the relationship between one and two, um, you can take a trend-based extension, right? right? And I don't, exactly. I don't have any, I don't have any values changed here. Just so everybody's aware, all of the values are standard. Um, I all, all I did was turn off a bunch of them because you don't need all this shit. Like four point seven six four, we don't need that shit. Um, I don't use the normal six one eight. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, I had six one eight twice. So yes, I do. But I added a 0.25 and a 0.5 in here, okay? And the the 2.5 and the 5 are another trade setup I'll explain later. I showed a few people the other day, uh, but I'll explain this trade setup later. It's not for motive waves. It's for corrective waves, okay? So um, as far as motive waves go, big impulsive waves, this is a really secure way to catch a trade, okay? Um, now... Let's talk about the, so let's say we top out our wave three up here, okay? We want to know how far are we going to retrace, right? Like maybe you want to try to catch a scalp here or something, okay? Um, typically, and I say typically, uh, because sometimes it can be a bit more extreme. Like the moves that we just made, um, this is a much more extreme wave four, okay? Which can happen. Um, when the markets get volatile, but I'll 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 get back to Bitcoin in a bit. This is just assuming we are playing some standard trades. Okay, typically your wave four is going to retrace fourteen to thirty eight percent. Okay, so that means anywhere from here all the way down to here. Wait, bro. I'm failing in class today. I don't normally teach this stuff, so I have to. So uh, there we go. You can do it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, just put it on the, I just put it on the wrong spot, man. I, you know. Um, I'll go, brother. I'll go. Now, Doing great, brother. now, the thing about wave four is it, it can dip into this territory here, but typically your wave five, I'm sorry, not your wave five, your, uh, your, your half fib right here, if you're doing uh, a retracement, if wave four breaks this, more than likely it's going to break the peak of one. Okay. So this is when you know you're no longer that you are wrong about an impulse wave. Okay. Impulse waves are not going, or a wave four is not going to retrace deeper than the peak of wave one. That is extremely crucial. Okay. Um, if, if this breaks like this, then more than likely what you had was an, actually was an ABC here. Okay. That completed and you're beginning an impulse wave to the downside, okay? More than likely. Or it could be doing a double, um, which I'll get to in a minute, but it could be doing a double correction like this, okay? But I don't want to throw too much out there all at once. I want to stick to kind of where we're at and just make sure everybody's aware that this is really the, the zero point, right? 
you cannot have a wave four break this. Otherwise, your count is wrong, and this was not impulsive. So generally, we should see in futures a 3A2 retracement, sometimes a little deeper. So we'll take it just a tad bit deeper, okay? Just a tad. Um, and then the fifth wave um, is generally... So I, I, I personally like to take um, the... And this is what I was talking about earlier. I like to take a retracement on the fifth wave, okay? Um, and I do it inversely. So it gives us an extension point, and this wave five should extend somewhere into this box. Okay. Um, again, there's no exact point that says, uh oh, uh oh, there we go. Oh, uh, because I have it so scrunched. That's why. Um, there's nothing that says that we're going to stop here, 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 or here, right? It just, this is our zone because. This is where the extensions have, have plotted themselves. Okay. Um, so that's why you'll see me a lot of times with my entries, I have a box and then I, I end up having to layer my entries um, like such, right? I'll put multiple entries because there's not really a, anything that says like, it's just going to stop here. Okay. The, the, the most important part of determining the end of a wave five and it's the only indicator that Elliott Wave actually uses. Um, I use one other, which is the EMAs, but I'll explain that later, um, is RSI. Okay. And just regular RSI. You don't change anything. Not SRSI, not RSI offset, blah, blah, blah. Not, just RSI, period. Okay. Um, and you'll, you guys have seen me posting some trend lines lately about the RSI, and I'll, I'll get to that. But if you want to determine the end of five, then what you want to see is you're making higher highs in price, right? And the RSI is continuing to make lower highs like this, okay? Typically, what happens is, let me put a trend line here, is you'll get a trend line. If your motive wave is up, you'll get a trend line where all the tops are, um, I'm sorry, I have that backwards, where all the bottoms are, um, are bouncing off of, okay? So you'll have all these bottoms bouncing, 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 and then you'll get a break down below and a rejection. Let me squeeze that a little bit. So it'll break through this trend line to the downside, signaling the weakness, and then it'll reject. Let me bring this up here. And then it'll reject this RSI trend line right here, okay? And where it rejects and you have divergence, okay, then that typically signals the end of the impulse wave. Now, it can extend a little further sometimes, but this is a pretty clear indication that we're, that we're signaling the end of an impulse wave is when this RSI fails and rejects off the same trend line that you get the impulse wave going, okay? So, um, and this is crucial for Elliott Wave, is understanding the relationship of divergences. Um, and let me clarify something. In Elliott Wave, we don't use hidden divergences. I know other trading styles use the hiddens. Um, we don't. There are two basic, they're really simple, right? <clears throat> this is a bullish divergence. Let's see. No, wrong side. My bad. Right, so we use um, the RSI is, is, no, yeah. God, I'm always fucked up on the, on the, let me do the other way, sorry. My brain's not working today. Let's start with this one first. <laughs> this one is easier to, to do. Um, so we're going to have higher prices, right? And RSI is, is making lower lows. Um, so we're going to get some really nice divergences this way. Um, and that's really what we want to see is the RSI making divergence. And to give you an example, this is where we had some really nice divergences in here that signaled the beginning of wave four, right? We have a really, really high high here and then lower highs, right? Lower highs. So at that point, we could say, hey, safely we're going to start to have a decline here right um but again i didn't like this short even though i was literally in 
at this was my entry <laughs> on this short. I still closed in here. Um, and I'll, again, I'll explain that later and, and, and get to that. So just so everybody knows I missed that one too. Uh, don't worry. And I had a baller entry. Um, so anyways, uh, let's, let's kind of recap on the motive wave. Okay. Motive waves, you know, you want this to be a good relationship. Um, your four can't break your peak of one. Once you have one and two determined, you can determine three, four, and five to an accuracy of, you know, 10, 15% plus or minus, right? Is it always going to be perfect? No, not always. Um, but if you have just a true and proper motive wave, um, then generally you can see something like this for me. Okay. Um, two is always a little tricky. That's why I don't like to try to project two. I mean, you can, there is a, the formula for it, which I explained. It's typically anywhere from 50% to 85% of wave one. Um, but I don't like, I just don't like that, that retracement. Um, it's not a fun one for me, uh, because it, it's such a big range. Um, so trying to catch, you know, the bottom of this impulse wave is really, really dangerous because this can, and especially if your count's wrong, if your count is wrong and this actually isn't an impulse wave, this thing can just, just die on you. Right. So the safe trade is the breakout. Right, is the break of the peak of one, and then having your six one eight, your one six one eight extension set, okay, based on. Here, let me fix it so it lines up again. Um, having your one six one eight extension and closing your long or short. Whatever, okay. So, any questions about motive waves? I want to make sure. I yeah, what time frame should you be uh, looking at motives on? So the smallest I use is the hourly. When I'm looking at the larger picture, um, I try to chart everything on the daily. Um, so I use the daily, the four hour, and the one hour. Um, the 12 hour, six, and two are just kind of like guidelines for me to kind of help me get an idea of where things are at. Uh, but I would not recommend like starting off trying to put um, like trying to chart Elliott waves in really small time frames because there's always a larger wave at play over that 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 govern these smaller frames um, and so you can get trapped in thinking you're going to go a direction using Elliott wave in the small frames and then it just like absolutely blasts you in the in the other direction and you're completely fucked and you're caught with your pants down. Right. So um, I try not to get lower than the one hour. Uh, I will touch on, I, I do use 15 and five for certain things. Um, some guys saw me earlier when I was uh, charting and trying to get some shit done. I was down here on the 15 on USDX. So you can see I've got a bunch of little stuff. Um, and I was trying to set this up so I can show you guys later. But starting off, my recommendation would be to stick to no less than an hourly. Um, to just give you an idea of where stuff's going to go. Um, Elliott Wave does work on smaller frames. I'm not going to say it doesn't. I, I know like Kiko uses it on smaller frames, and he's a great trader. Um, some guys have really kind of figured out some of the ups and downs of crypto with it. Um, I think my challenge is that I do too much in like indices and stocks and commodities. And so you don't trade commodities in the 15 minute. Like most guys don't even trade them in the hourly. I'm a pretty rare person to trade commodities on the hourly, right? So um, I just don't like getting too too deep into my time frames here. I try to stick at least on the hourly or above. It, it just gives you a really accurate sense of where things are at, right? Um, and if I can, I prefer to chart in the four hour because it's it's less there's not as busy and you can see more of the asset, whatever you're charting, right? I can see more of this to give me a clearer picture, right? I can see this whole correction on the four hour. Whereas if I was down here on the 15, trying to chart from the 15, I'd have to keep like, you know, oh, okay, well, what was this wave? What was this wave? Like, well, okay, where am I at? And it just gets so confusing. Does, it, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my, my real preference is to chart the four. 
And then what I'll do is I'll break down from the four. I'll get down into my hourly. Once I, once I set waves on the, on the four, I'll get down to my hourly and check some of the internals here. And then from there, if I need to check on something small, I'll break down to the 15 and kind of, you know, just double check. But that's once I have all of my charts set up, um, then I can look at the 15. Like if I wanted to see, okay, here's a great example of where I would use the 15. Okay. And I'll get to corrections in a minute, but this is a corrective sequence that we're in right now. Um, and the corrective sequence should end somewhere in here. Okay. And this is based on an ABC on the 15. That's also assuming that this candle doesn't break above these two highs. If we stay below these two highs, then we should see this zone before another push to the upside on Bitcoin today. Okay. Um, but uh, like if I'm, if I'm down here trying to just figure out like, okay, do I want to take a long entry? Because I know that, you know, like me personally, I know that we have an impulse to the upside here, right? We're going to be pushing. So if I want to take a long entry, I could potentially look at this and go, okay, so the asset can really push all the way down into the 618. But if it breaks the 618, then for sure we're done, right? So I could put a stop loss down here and try to trade this box for a long run. Right. Uh, but again, this is very, very risky, right? Um, and this is why the 15 could be deceiving because this is a big, massive downtrend. We have not broken this peak yet, okay? Um, a break of this peak, I'm for sure bullish to higher prices. I like to be bullish here because I'm kind of biased right now. Um, but if I was going to take an objective view at the market, we have no indication of up or down from this point right here, right? Mm. So this is very, very risky long. So that's why you guys won't see me call stuff like this. I'll play it on the challenge account, you know, put, you know, 50 bucks or whatever just to see if it plays out because I like to test it. Um, but it's really can be a super risky trade. Now, if you're okay with setting the stop here, right, just below the 618, and you catch an entry here, I mean, that is not really a bad, um, you know, RR, especially like let's just say you're going to play to the break up there. I mean, still not a terrible RR. It's 6.53, right? It just depends on how much margin you're willing to use. And I don't know what, you know, everybody's accounts look like. Right. So this is totally like up to you guys um, wanting to take a trade on something like this. Right. But personally, personally, I just don't like it. Um, we don't have enough confirmation here. You know, I want to see like a clean, another clean push up um, on this price action, uh, possibly challenging the highs here. You know, uh, the real, the real play, if you wanted to look at the one I was just talking about where you play the break of, right? So what you could have done on Bitcoin is this is a smaller internal impulse here. Let me identify it so you guys can see, right? And we should get right up into there. And so if you would have determined hey, this is wave one and this is wave two, right? And we're for sure, we're confident, we're feeling good about it. Then you could have taken your extension here, okay? Well, let me show you. You could have entered at the break of one, which would have been right there, okay? And you would have closed at the 618 right there. And on a scalp at the break, you could have taken... 5.76% on leverage. So oh, okay. and this is this is for higher leverage guys. This is a really mm -hmm. safe play for higher leverage, right? So if you would 50 X's, that's a 250% trade. Yeah. And you're safe, you're closed. And I mean, real time, exactly what I just was explaining to you guys, this whole setup, you can see it real time perfectly played out. And yeah. That, yeah. that's it's just such a super safe trade to take with Elliot. I absolutely love it. The thing that you have to do is once you break out of this, like here, I always recommend at either the one or the one, two, three, six, but generally the one, because you can see we didn't touch it. I, I recommend taking partial profits at the one and then putting yeah. your stop loss. Yeah. Right. right. Um, and also the same on this trade, when you, when you play the breakout, you really can just put your stop loss like right there. 
you don't you don't have to put it way down here and, and whatever because as right. soon as it breaks that one it's not going to come back like that quickly right so yeah. you can have yeah. a really tight stop here minimal loss and take a really really nice trade to the upside take your profits at the one stop loss to even right you're up here and then full close here so you could do a 50 percent close here and a full close here right and so this is a really really nice trade to take and you can take the same trade to the downside right let me go find an impulse wave to the downside real quick and show you um let's see just so we can get an idea right so this one was a really extended one but it's still a fun one um i shorted this i called this one a david server I think, right? No. Where was it? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this was one of the trades I called a David server a while back um, and another server I'm in. Um, and so, you know, we played the breakout of one, which was here, and bang, took the breakout partial here just to be sure, and it perfectly tapped the 618. You can see the wick, and this was a full close trade, and then immediately snapped back up, right? Yeah. And this was a really, really, really nice trade, taking the break of the one here, down to here, and that was 31%. So you can right. see on bigger moves, if you guys high leverage on the bigger moves even i mean imagine using 50x there that's a 1500 percent trade that's a huge so um there's a lot of ways that you can you can utilize this breakout strategy in elliott wave um again i personally don't use it um i probably could i could start incorporating it i just chart way too much shit to sit here and try to mess with all the breakout trades <laughs> i'm like you can see, like I've got, you know, I'm looking at Bitcoin, ETH, and QES. Um, I always keep USDX active for direction. I've got um, this trade coming uh, soon, as soon as we hit this target zone. Um, I was only looking at Apple because I was trying to figure out how the indices are going to do today. Apple really drives indices. So, um, you know, RTY the same, but um, really like this breakout trade. So, um, any questions about the, the breakout trade? It's not about the breakout trade. It's just a question. Do you only trade Bitcoin, Ethereum, and uh, NASDAQ and the other one? Uh, yes, uh -huh. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin are the only cryptos I trade. Uh, uh -huh. NQ, ES, RTY, and then a bunch of commodities like palladium, gold, natural gas, crude oil. Uh, when you trade gold, do you use very high leverage or, or not? Because when I look at the moves on gold, no. they're a little. Mm -hmm. No, those gold is more of like if you guys want to take like profits and you want to store profits securely somewhere and you just want your money to grow. Um, a lot of guys will take and they'll go to, to metals. Um, so let's pull up like, let me show you gold. XAU USD, uh, gold spot. So I do have an active trade incoming on this one soon. Ah, actually, Kenny, are you there? Always. Okay. Um, What's up? Hold on, sorry. Um, uh, remember how I told you to wait on gold? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, dude. And I was going to long it at that point. Fucking A, man. Oh, man. Good call. So, Good call. So I said, wait, <laughs> just based on the internals. You want to you know, know what's funny? Um, Skirmy was about to long it too. I told him to stop. Dude, it was looking beautiful, bro. Wasn't it yeah. like a nice I know. Thing? It's a bay. Oh. If you look at DXY or um, Texas, uh, I don't know what it's called, USDX or something. Like, it, it's so obvious it's a fake. And then. <laughs> they took the fuck you over so yeah, hard. Oh, uh, it would have. It would have, man. Thank you. <clears throat> we got a team here. You see? <laughs> I got the, so, I got eye on that. like, yeah. with gold, though, like, I, this is something that I would store money, right? If, like, if I was wanting to do that, I would take some profits and I would put profits up here. Um, and I would take a short 
and then you could just store money. I mean, this is a long range trade, um, very long range trade. I mean, we're talking probably several months to make this, this move. So whatever your profits are, a thousand, 50,000, 500 bucks, a hundred bucks, it doesn't matter. If you just want to see that money grow over time, um, then you just throw it in there and let it, let it ride. And that's what I use uh, commodities for is a place to store profits and just let them just run. Right. Um, because the moves are really secure. They're not as volatile as crypto and everything else. Um, so we can get like really for sure, nice trades out of these. And, and so that's why I like to do this kind of stuff. So, um, but that, that's really interesting. Man. It's the first time I ever saw someone do that. Like normally they trade gold. They don't, uh, use it like you use it like i know you're trading it too but like like they trade it like they trade it you know oh yeah no that's uh that's for the birds i ain't interested in all that yeah um, no, it's, it's, it's a very good it's a very good uh, way like because you won't get stressed or anything you're just gonna put like the stop loss and take profit and let it ride exactly it's a just a super chill way to to run through stuff so yeah because uh, I recently got into Forex, but like, I was like, what? It's too much, you know, Forex, crypto and all that. And then I was like, okay, why not like um, see what's the best for me? And for now, I mean, crypto is the best, but like I'm still looking at other uh, other stocks. And I'm like, well, if I can just trade like one or two cryptos, I could also trade one or two stocks exactly. and it would not be a headache. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I... The, the problem that I have with, with stocks and why I don't chart them, I mean, I look at like Apple because Apple takes up a big part of the NASDAQ, right? Like if Apple tanks, you're going to see um, the market tank. It's like Apple's like Bitcoin, right? Um, okay. The individual stocks are more like alts. They can move erratically. Um, and you never know, you know, this company can buy this company and this stock will go up and that one will go down. And, you know, even though the SPX is, let's say the SPX is on a bull run, you can have a stock just absolutely tank for some reason, right? Okay. Um, so I don't prefer trading the individual stocks. Um, they can be too volatile for me. Um, it's just personal preference, right? I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just giving you my my side of of uh, yeah, trading won't stocks. You say, won't you say um, like Nasdaq is the Bitcoin of uh, stocks or no? No, no, no. Because you have Nasdaq, you have the no. Russell. You have the S and P five hundred, like you have different ones, man. That they all kind of yeah. That's it's a whole index. Like imagine all of crypto was divided yeah. into four different sections, right? Yeah. Or, like or let's like say Meta had coins, like four different Bitcoins, yeah. Like they all have sub, you know, coins and shit like that under them, kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's that's okay, so more like, of what the different indices are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, it's like a a, a group of stocks together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, NASDAQ is tech. The Dow Jones is like industrial type uh, stocks. Okay. The S&P 500 or the Fortune 500 companies. Um, the Russell, oh, I forget what the Russell is. Yeah, the Russell, I think, is like energy, if I'm not mistaken. I think yeah, okay. Russell's energy. energy. Okay, we, we, yeah. don't have, we don't have this in crypto. We don't have something similar. No, 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 no. It's totally no, different. We're so, decentralized. Uh, Mm. Um, also, also uh, just a question. What are the yields? The yields? Yeah. Of what? I don't know. If the you yields of that. what? Oh. You mean uh, the bond yields? Huh? The bond yields? Yeah. Like like ten year bonds? Mm hmm. Oops. Ten years. <laughs> I don't want to change the interval to ten years. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's it's a it's a percent. It's the yields of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, the bond yields. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so bond yields are going to pretty much use or move similar with with USDX price action. Okay, similar, not the same, but similar. Um, yeah. again, they don't move tick for tick or anything like that. But uh, there's a relationship. I just don't use them very much. They're they're not as reliable. Um, yeah, and at least for me anyways, I know some guys use them. I, trust me. I know all the streamers like Tino and all those guys, you know, uh, they want to use the 10 year bond yields. Fine. If that works for them, it works for them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's not really a good enough relationship for me between this and markets uh, because like 
you know, I mean, typically bond yields are going up. You should see, uh, you know, a decline in indices theoretically. Well, I mean, bro, like it's been bullish and ES is just like, ah, fuck you. Right. Like it doesn't matter. So I'm not a fan of the bond yields. I don't like them. I don't chart them. As you can see, my chart is completely clean on bond yields. I, I don't, I don't touch these at all. It's just not something that's in my purview really. So, um, but let me move on to, uh, let me move on to, uh, corrective waves here. Cause we got a lot in on, uh, motive waves and, uh, BTC USD. I'm going to use the Bitfinex one. So we talked about the motive waves. Okay. Um, now for every motive wave, well, and let me, let me get back into something on this. Okay. Let me actually break this down a little bit. And I already have this stuff charted. So within waves, and this is probably the most confusing part for anybody who's starting Elliott wave. Okay. Um, is that within, uh, within waves, there's always more waves within more waves, within more waves. Okay. Um, and not to be redundant or I, I just, this is why I drew this this morning. So you guys can see really how this breaks down. And so this is where a question of like, okay, what time frame do I use? Right? Well, on the hourly, it's really hard to see some of these smaller internal waves. See this AB here? You're like, well, what the hell? Like, is that really a wave? Why isn't this the AB? Why isn't that the AB? Why is it this one in particular? Right? So sometimes for some of these smaller movements, you have to get down into, um, a little bit better time frame if you're going to try to chart see like when i when i first pull up like all of my retracements like this this wave four retracement which was a really fun retracement actually um god why am i doing that backwards all morning dude something's wrong with my brain kenny <laughs> right so remember earlier we were saying on these retracements if it breaks the 0.5 then we're done right or if it breaks the peak of one, that's why you guys saw me posting the other day in chat. If it breaks this level, 19,950-ish or whatever, um, then we're going to signal that this is actually... And we came super close, dude. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Here's the invalidation level. Like, it was so close. I was so, like... When I woke up this morning, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, not again, you know? <laughs> I mean, look at that. <laughs> Like, you know what Damn. I mean? Like right there, bro, right there. Like so close. But the good news is we held. Okay. Um, for you scalpers out there, uh, the reason why these are fun or I call them fun is you guys could have actually figured up a retracement between three, eight, two and 0.5. Right. But because the peak of one was higher than the 0.5, we know we're not going to even get close to this. So you could have taken a trade somewhere in this zone Along this under the 382 and put your stop loss just below the peak of one and caught the bottom right okay. Okay. and so this is this is a way that you could have caught the bottom um for this move here okay i don't recommend this it's a very counter trend play i don't i don't even like teaching it um okay. personally but i know a lot of guys scalp and just due to the fact that the rr is really safe here right like let's say you would have just caught the very top of this zone even Okay. Um, just to be conservative. I mean, you could have at least squeezed out and let's say you close now because price action sucks. You could have at least squeezed out 2.54 RR, right? Yeah. Like 1.93% quick scalp. Like if you're on 50 X, that's a hundred percent move right there. Bang. And you're in, you're out, you're done. You know, hey, text, yeah, I, have a question. Text, I was going to say, that's a great fucking play, by the way, because there's a breakout and you're catching the retest instead of chasing it all the way at the top. And it, then it makes his, you know, new lows right about where it kind of almost broke out. It, it's it's something I look at. Yeah. So I yeah. Do like the no, these are these are fun. Yeah. If you if you see a wave three like this going super high mm -hmm. and you're like, OK, well, I miss I miss wave three. I missed this breakout. Right. Mm -hmm. So, damn, that sucks. I still want to try to make money. And, and we know that there's going to be one more push to the upside. You can draw your extension here, hope for a 382 retracement, put an entry here, a stop loss at the peak of one, 
make sure your RR is safe. And then now you've got a solid RR trade pushing up. Mm-hmm. You hey, know, Tex, I have so, a question. Yes, sir. About your, your impulse wave. You said um, four cannot be lower than one. The bottom of four cannot be lower than the peak of one. That's correct. So, so the way I trade, right, I, I started to find things where like some, some impulse waves, four is lower than one, but it still works out. Um, on what it's time like, frame? On like a four hour. Like I have one right now on AUD. Um, like literally four is below the peak of one, but it still finished the impulse wave to one, two, three, four, five. Oh shit! No, no, AUD, AUD, USD. Um. Well, I use the spot. The spot's the pretty accurate one. Uh, not gold. Not gold. AUD. A. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, you said AUD, well, I send USD. A I can send the picture. I'll send it. Yeah, post it in chat real quick. Let me see. Word. Mm, so I would say that where your five is is actually three. So so that was one of my hypotheses where like I was like that one and two shouldn't be there, right? Because like it doesn't that seem one like and, that one and two seems to be okay because the next peak, the one that's right before the three there, um, that peak actually breached higher. So well, actually that next one is probably one. So if you slid your one over to the next peak to the right. That seems a little bit more uh, realistic to be the one. And then your two is at the bottom of where you have the three. The three should be where the five is. The four is probably going to end up somewhere right in. Um, we can uh, draw it on the screen. Yeah, hold on. Let me see. You're on the Australian dollar against what? Is USD. it USD? Okay. Yeah. Just FXCM? Uh, I use the wand. Well, it's the same thing. doesn't matter. Okay. So. Four hour. On the four hour. Okay. Um, well, okay. So, so actually, this is a great question. I'm glad you brought this up. So we're in a corrective sequence. Okay. So in any corrective sequence, and I, and I say that because this is, this is motive down, right? Trend down. So any counter trend is a retracement or a corrective. Okay. Same thing. So you're not going to start an impulse at the bottom of this. You don't finish an impulse and then begin another impulse like this. That's, that's invalid. So you have to play a corrective sequence here and the corrective sequence is going to be something like this, right? Um, where the C leg will be impulsive. The A leg can be, but it not always is right. So more than likely if I had to just make a rough peek at this, Wait, that's Maybe. interesting that you said that because because uh, Kiko told me that it doesn't necessarily go like uh, impulse corrective, impulse corrective. It could be impulse, impulse. Uh, I mean, I the base theory. Um, I highly disagree with that. Yeah. Um, just on the base theory, um, but you know. I mean, to each their own, because he told me that everyone, uh, Elliot waves can't be different. Doesn't mean they're wrong. No, and it doesn't. You're you're right. But just based on the initial theory, I mean, if you're if you have an impulse into an impulse, it's very rare. It can happen, Um, but typically, it's something is mislabeled, and a lot of guys are not wanting to go back and rechart some of their old stuff. You'll see me go back and rechart stuff from the past often. Uh, because we're making different moves and we hit certain invalidation points. Um, man, this one's a tricky one, even on the hourly. This is a corrective yeah, I move. I don't like the hourly. I went straight to the four hour. No, this is a, definitely a corrective move. Oh, why do I keep clicking? So Yeah, it's definitely a corrective because the overall trend is down. If I had to do this, uh, I mean, I don't even like that as an ABC. Yeah, see, I don't even like that one. That one's a little poopy. Um, 
that actually seems a little bit more legit, in my opinion, is something like, no, something like this. <clears throat> and then, um, no, what am I doing? I had it right a minute ago. Yeah, I mean, sorry, it, it doesn't sorry. really matter, no, no, no. right? Because your your C still ends up over there. Or, oh, you're doing it that way. Yeah, right. So C could have ended anywhere up in here. Um, I think this is your sequence because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven swings to the A, which is corrective. Then you have three swings down, corrective, and then you have one, two three either one of these probably three That's four so five i charted now you it have differently a, uh, now you um, have an impulsive sequence here and this would have been a nice short in my opinion okay so yeah i would say because you have seven swings which is it's always going to be corrective and overall we have one two three four five six seven overall as well and that's what we want to see um as well so yeah I, I would pretty much call this move done more than likely your impulse is here right here embedded in the c leg so this is where i would say we're impulsive here um your one can be either one of these peaks really probably this one your impulse moving up to about here and then here and let's see did we end in divergence let's check the divergences yep we have an ending in, di in divergence here um which is a great indication that, yep. So you see the divergence there? Yeah. So that's a great indication that the impulse wave is completed right there. And you want to make sure that the, uh, so this actually can't be A. This has to be A here. And this is an expanded flat, which can happen. This is an expanded flat. And the reason for that is your, um, your, uh, the RSI of the A yeah. has to be, you can't have divergence from A to C. So we have divergence here to end the impulse wave that went up, but the C, which is like over in here, has to have a greater RSI than the A wave. So I would say that this is corrective with an expanded flat in the middle. It's just a really funky correction. That's all. But I would, I would pretty much say that it's complete, more than likely. Especially considering that we're breaking down into these EMAs, we'll probably get a retest here of the EMA and then further decline. So that would be my initial thoughts on that. But that's a great analysis to lead into corrective waves. Okay. Um, so let's talk about corrective waves because I was talking about waves within waves within waves. So on your let me clear all this off and <clears throat> anytime you have a motive wave whether it's up or down okay it doesn't matter um corrective is always the pullback a lot of guys call them pullbacks um or retracements is another proper name for it okay so you get these corrective waves or retracement waves um and uh or pullbacks I, I can use terminology but the proper is um corrective okay so let's dive into what is a corrective wave um simply put a corrective wave is a counter trend um correction okay it's when the market needs to eat back up some liquidity kind of like what we're doing right now right like there's a lot of liquidity down here people were probably shorting because they're like oh my god short 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 right like Bitcoin failed here. We didn't hit the new high. Let's short, 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 short. We failed a new high. Short, 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 short. And then the market's like, yeah, fuck you. We're taking your liquidity. Okay. Um, it's corrective. Corrective waves are some of the most difficult waves to trade um, internally. That's why when there's corrections, you don't see me post a lot of plays. I don't really chart it out um, as far as like trying to catch all these different moves up and down. Sometimes I will. Something looks a little sneaky. Um, but for the most part, I don't like to really trade a lot of the corrections because so many things can happen internally with these. Um, and that's what we're going to kind of get into and explain. Um, so your correction comes in three forms. So if you have a motive wave, okay, 
you can have a corrective wave here from one to two. Well, it always is from three to four is always corrective. And then a lot of times you'll begin. Um, well, let me take that back. It depends on what the trend is. Okay. So if your trend is up at the completion of the impulse wave, you're going to get a larger scale correction that typically is going to eat up at least 50% of your impulse. Okay. Um, sometimes a little less, right? It could be a little bit less like this, like, you know, um, but you'll typically get a correction to eat up the impulsive liquidity, right? Another great example is, you know, we impulse down, we're eating up about 50% of this move here, right? Maybe a little more. Um, so this is pretty standard. We're eating up liquidity, eating it up. You know, another big move down, eat up liquidity, eat it up, right? Um, so that's that's crucial. Impulse down, correction. Now, this is when everything was really weak, and I think this was wartime, like Ukraine and shit happened somewhere back in, in this zone. Um, so we failed to... I was actually charting a zone up here for... Um, for a decline, but we failed that due to war and things like that. So it uh, doesn't always work out the way that we want it to, per se. Uh, but a corrective sequence is going to eat up this, the liquidity of whatever direction we're going. Um, and I'm trying to keep this off the screen because we're actually headed down, uh, but it's easier for me to show these going up, right? So the problem with corrective sequences is <clears throat> internally, on a corrective sequence, you can get a lot of different patterns here. This can be the motive wave here. It can also be a WXY internally here. I don't even know. Oh, I know why. Uh, yeah. Um, what in the world? Oh, I chose the wrong one. That's why. There we go. It can be a WXY like this. Um, and I'll get into these in a minute. But typically, your C leg is going to be impulsive, like such. Um, your A is not always going to be impulsive. Um, a lot of times, it is going to be ABC. If it is impulsive, then you're looking at something a little bit closer to a flat correction, which is more like, like this, when you get this type of movement. Right? Your B is always going to be corrective. And again, you know, we talk about waves within waves you know, this is going to be corrective. That's going to be corrective, like all the way down to the one minute. It'll just be corrective, corrective, corrective. Um, this is why I don't like the corrective waves. And they're really difficult to necessarily determine exactly where all this internal shit's going to go. Okay. Um, so let's get away from all the confusing part of it and just look at the simplest form of it, um, which is we can find extension zones similar to uh, the motive waves um, charting the A and the B, it will give us an extension zone from a one to a six, one, six, one, eight. And this will be the zone that we look to um, take the, the play to the opposite direction. Okay. So let's say like what we're doing right now, we have a motive wave going down, right? Bang, 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 bang. Okay. We correct the sequence. These corrective sequences, as long as we're still motive down, um, we can say, hey, really? I want to short this, right? You out so a great spot that we did so that long. was yeah. here. I, 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 this was a yeah, really I, I, great place to do that. that okay. How do I get the problem with this, um, I and I said I would get into the explanation of this at some point, and so that's what I'm, I'm trying to get into now, as to why we closed some of the, uh, why, why I closed the, oh, the shorts okay. here, yeah. okay. is because this is no longer <laughs> so a simple ABC sequence, okay? ABC is a single correction. I hope it's just this a WXY one. is what we call a double correction. And it's very likely Kenny, I hope it we is could do this. This, this is extremely black, likely. I'm have not saying that it's happening. I still believe in the short from here because of weakness. And I'll get into more of why I believe that soon needs. enough. But if you're look, just purely looking at this from an Elliott have. Wave standpoint, we could easily any be doing other, this. No, I don't have okay. any others. That means we'd have to that is one of the driving factors of why I, I closed one. these the other day. Okay. Um, also, Shit. because I knew we would make a wave okay, five, even if we're not work, going as man. high as this. Oh, right? this is, I knew yeah, at least we're going to make another wave five and we could have a better chance to catch stuff there. 
but okay. let's leave alone the WXY right. for now. I want to explain why this is important though. So this zone is safe, right? This is an exact replica of this, okay? Motive wave down, corrective sequence up. This is a perfect zone to short. I mean, perfect, okay? Um, I love shorting these. This is your, like, there are some guys that, that take the trades that I call and they put a lot of money oh, on these because they're super cool, safe. Man. The RR is massive. You know, um, this yeah. trade should have ended up somewhere like down here in the 15s. So, you know, these guys are trading from this point down into the 15s. Uh, that's a 34% move on leverage, right? And that's that's what a lot of guys are, are wanting is these big, safe trades. Um, and this really was a perfect extension here. Um, let's see. One, two, three. Yeah. Because it was a double correction of the upside, I believe. This right. Um, just so you can see, I mean, we just kind of came down. right above the 236. Mm -hmm. So the entry zone would have actually been Story this, <laughs> right? And we came right above the 236, um, which most of the entries should be in here. Only a couple uh, lagging entries should be up here with a stop loss above here, right? So that's how you would trade that, okay? Um, which scalpers don't like this. There's a big gap here. Um, you know, I mean, if your one entry is here, your stop loss can be as much as 14% back. Okay. Um, yes. Is that a problem? Yeah, it is. Right. Um, so when we look at these corrective sequences I... and trying to trade them, it's more than just, Oh, let me throw a fib and catch a zone. Okay. The deeper part of it is understanding the internal waves, which was why I discussed how waves within waves within waves, because then you can start to accurately chart different things in here. Um, this guy was a WXY to the upside. Okay. Um, then we had an ABC. I believe the ABC was here, if I'm not mistaken. And then this was, um, I think this actually was another impulsive wave. Uh, I'm sorry, another, another correction within here. Um, I have to go look at my other chart, but I'm pretty sure that was that. And then for the C leg, we had like one, two, three, four, five. It was a really ugly impulse. But based on the impulse wave, we could have taken another extension here. I'm sorry. Black is low. Retracement from here, like this. And we could have. Uh, so I, actually, I don't think that was the impulse. I need to go look at my other chart. My point is, and I guess that's not really the, the my point is, is based on the internals of the wave, um, this has never happened before. we were able to accurately determine that this zone right in here was the prime zone to short, that we weren't going to reach as high as the 618. And I think we had a stop loss of like somewhere up around 25. I have to go back and look at my calls. Uh, but we had an entry zone right here to the 236 because based on the internals of the rest of the sequence, um, we could determine that we weren't going to no, get this high. This thing's okay. probably not even on. So, oh, this sucks for uh, I mean, this so, is bullshit. Oh, shit. Whoops. Sorry, guys. I didn't even know what was happening. Oh. <laughs> my, uh, apo but, my apologies. My apologies. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, average entry and closing down this price action, you know, anywhere from 20 to 23% move, right? Um, we always take trims and fibs. And on this move back to the upside, we had a stop loss at this low here um, based on the previous waves. And so we actually got stopped out of profits on this trade here uh, because of the reaction that we got. So it's unfortunate, but we did take two targets, right? So my point is, is that for scalpers, it's generally a more preferable trade for you guys to take these breakout trades like this, okay? But I'm going to show you a different breakout trade on the corrective sequences that you guys can take here in just a second, which is also good for scalpers. This is a swinger, like a swing traders um, uh, trade here. This is what swing traders want to see. And if we get stopped out here, that's okay. Um, a lot of the guys doing the swing trades have really high margins. So, you know, it, you're, you're taking really nice profits on the way down. And like one of my guys, he made like 10 or 12 grand on this move coming down here. Um, I know I took, I don't know, a week or so. Um, so he was really happy, very happy.
Um, then we got stopped out and we've literally been waiting this entire, like almost a month for this thing to, to move and do something with itself. So back to corrective sequences. Um, there's not always like a perfect, uh, I don't know. There's not really like a perfect setup as far as like how corrections are supposed to look. This is your basic corrective sequence. Um, but this is also why I want to discuss corrective sequences and it's going to pertain to some of the recent price action for us. So this is a standard um, correction. Okay. I'm going to start to really throw some people for a loop, but this is why I don't trade corrections that much. You can have what's called a regular flat. Okay. Regular flat the B wave actually comes above your zero point. And when I was showing uh, Drew on, on the Australian dollar, um, we had more of an expanded flat, which I'll get to that in a minute. Your regular flat, the B wave breaks high, but then your C is basically equal to the A. Okay. This can happen sometimes. Um, it's not fun when it does this because this is a big fake out here. You, you think, oh my goodness, we're, we're breaking out. It's an impulse now, right? It's an impulse because we broke the, the point of this. Well, you have to be careful uh, because the price action will tell you, oops, the price action will tell you what sequence this is. If this breaks in a five wave sequence, then yes, you're probably right. We are in a motive wave. Okay. But if it breaks in a three wave sequence like this, then we're doing a flat. Okay. Um, and I'll get to the swings in a second. You also have expanded flats, which can take this type of shape. Okay. Like let's say you had your impulse coming up to it. Um, this is really huge. Sorry. Let me make this a little smaller so the it's proportionate, but you can have, um, an expanded flat like this is entirely possible. Okay. Uh, and this is when you can really kind of get faked out on some shit because you're thinking, oh, well, wait a minute. You know, we, 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 we broke the high of the five. There's divergence here in the RSI. Uh, it's the 618 of the, of the move on the impulse. You know, all the signs are telling me that uh, the impulse is done. Wait, whoa, 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 why is it going higher? I shorted this. Why is it going higher? Oh, no. Right? And then you get stopped out. Well, Explain, expanded flats can occur. Um, they're not as common, uh, but they do occur. Um, generally, it's not from the end of a major frame impulse, uh, but it does happen, and I'll show you. Oh, you're not the computer. Never mind. Let's go to the four hour here, and I'll show you this. So this is an expanded flat, and it's a recent one in Bitcoin. Uh, the reason why this is an expanded flat and it's not a motive wave ending here or any other type of corrective wave um, is because the C leg of this, and this will tell you that you're in an expanded flat. The C leg was supposed to end here, <laughs> right? Like it was supposed to stop. This shouldn't have even been an A and a B really. This, this should have been a completion okay, of the downside. I'm coming, I'm coming. I the just, other way that I we do this is if you look at retracement values. Oops. God, I am doing that over and over again today. If you look at retracement values, okay, this is too big of a retracement. We broke a 382. It's way too big of a retracement. So initially, you're, you're not going to see an expanded flat coming. You're not going to be able to chart an expanded flat. There's, it's not tradable. It's completely shit. Okay. Um, I hate expanded flats. They're, they can really throw traders off. Um, yes, we did short this, but this was more of a fun play that I, I had with some guys. Uh, this wasn't a big major call. I'll, I'll explain that later. But we broke this 382 retracement. And if you remember from our motive waves, what we discussed is a motive wave. Uh, shit. Ah, so the motive wave, when you retrace on a motive wave, Right, the retracement value. No, everything's coming up. Blind. It can't do uh, a point five or a break of one. Right, and we went all the way to a three eight two here. 
This went all the way to 382. So completely invalidated the fact that this was an impulse wave. Okay. So what we had to do is we had to go back and we had to recalculate and find from which point did this actually make sense. Okay. Um, so based on the recalculation of the entire sequence, then we were able to say, okay, you know, here's the one, this didn't breach the one. So that's fine. So here's our one, here's our three and here's our five. Um, and so we had to go back and I had this whole sequence wrong, but when we caught this and we, and I figured out that, Hey, it's an expanded flat, then it was able to, to really kind of bring us into this whole sequence and get us to where we are today of understanding today's price action, the past week and the past month's price action. Okay. Um, uh, so yes, we were able to take some shorts, but as you can see, I mean, not a lot of trades once we get in these corrections for swing trades, um, uh, because in a corrective sequence, there's just really not like, you know, you can have double corrections and triple corrections where these become like this, you know, uh, then this becomes impulsive here like this. Oops. Right. I mean, I, and I don't want to sit here and draw every single wave. My point is, it, it, is you can just have so many swings down through each one of these you know, and you're never going to chart the exact location of all of this. Okay. Um, so when it's in correction, we look for what we call extremes because I don't want to make everybody like, well, why do you use Elliott wave in the first place? If you can't fucking trade it. Um, well, it, we look for extremes. Okay. So as I was showing you guys earlier on the extension over here, uh, this, well, actually this was, this was a good example, right? This was a double correction um, and the extension, because we always go from the zero point to the first place to the bottom of the corrective wave. And then we draw our extension zone. Okay. Um, initially, you know, we said this was the extension zone, but based on the internals of other waves, we stopped it at the two, three, six. So when we draw this extension, we can also draw it on larger frame corrective sequences. Okay. So like here, this is an ABC sequence. Well, what do we know about corrections? Corrections have extension zones. Our extension zone is typically the one to a one, two, three, six, but we're a little bit higher, right? We got a little bit higher. So that means we should be pushing up towards the top here. Okay. The problem with this push, that's why I'm not trading ETH and I'm going to get we're going to jump right into this here is that if you break a 618, the 1618 on a correction, then it's no longer just like we talked about for the expanded flat. If we break this 1618, it's no longer a regular ABC. Okay. This is why ETH literally scares the shit out of me. So ETH made a new low, right? Just like we were looking at here with Bitcoin, right? Looks similar. Okay. ABC, right? Well, A, B, C, <laughs> like ETH has a lot of strength. Um, hey, so I'm no longer going to be looking at taking a trade on ETH. I mean, we've already broken past the 2.0 here. Um, even if you were to call this an impulse wave here, like this is really dangerous territory because we've already broken past the 618. And we haven't even made a wave five yet. Wave five is projected to break above the 2.0. I mean, ETH is just like chugging, 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 going along, going along, going along. Okay. So um, a lot of problems with, uh, with ETH. Um, and I think this is a great way to, to, to talk about that expanded flat and corrective scenarios because we don't know this is going to happen. I mean, you guys all saw me call the shorts here and then call them here. But we didn't know that it was just going to push like so hard, right? Um, but that's why when something like this happens, we have good risk management. We get out of the trade. We didn't lose money, okay? Um, and we just have to continue to chart to our zones to the upside and just wait for ETH to finish. What I'm waiting for on ETH is for this corrective sequence to finish, okay? Because it's a really funky corrective sequence. I do not recommend trying to catch the top on a short at all. I don't recommend it. Okay. Um, so we want to see what happens up here. Once we reject, then 
the play on ETH, in my opinion, is waiting for this impulse to the downside, okay? Letting one and two play out, and then just like before, playing a break of one trade. And I think this is going to be your most valid trade. A secondary trade that you could take is, if you remember, two is always corrective, is we can target the top of two with a corrective sequence. Okay. The, I don't like this one as much here because of the strength of ETH, right? Ethereum is super bullish right now. The reason why I don't like this is because we can target this and say, oh, well, it's going to end in this zone. And then ETH just decides to keep going because this wasn't actually the end. It just had to retrace a little bit more and it keeps going. Okay. Um, so it, 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 you have to use a lot of judgment based on previous price action with Elliott Wave and understanding, okay, which trade setup am I going to use? Am I going to use a breakout? Am I going to use a corrective sequence extreme, right? Um, <clears throat> am I going to try to catch the top of this? Which trade am I going to do to use this method in order to make money? Well, you have to use the one that's the most viable um, and the most safe, uh, in my opinion. Um, but if you want to try to catch the extension of this zone, you can catch the extension. That's fine. Just be aware that you would need to put a stop loss above the previous peak, right? And sometimes that's not always a pretty stop loss. You know, if, if this is your entry and this is your stop loss, I mean, depending on your leverage, that could be pretty massive. You know, if you've got 20x leverage, like that's 120% negative. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, that's a really terrible stop loss, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, could you catch a big move to the downside? Sure. And if that RR is okay for you, then that's fine. Like, go for it. Um, but I don't like it. I much prefer the break of this because then my stop loss is literally, I could put a 1% a stop loss, right? Like that. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. And am I going to make as much money as if I caught it up here? No. I mean, your profits will be a little bit less but you're not running this risk, right? To me, this is risk, right? This is risk, but that's a really tiny amount of risk compared to this amount of risk. You know what I'm saying? Like, does that make sense to you guys? Like why I prefer these safer trades like this instead of these big, crazy, like nobody needs to have an ego up here, okay? It doesn't matter. Like, bro, if, you, if you're doing this just to say, hey, I caught the top, you're going to get blasted one day. And it's going to blast right through your shit. And you're going to lose money mm. for sure. Mm. Okay. This is ego. I don't like, nobody cares about the ego, bro. I mean, you know, I, I know I, I joke sometimes about shorting LTC at 132, and, and it's not a joke. We, we did. Um, and that's a little bit of my ego coming out, but like <clears throat> nobody knows the guy that shorted this. Nobody knows who he is. Mm. You know, nobody knows this guy <laughs> who cares. <laughs> Good point. Seriously. Yeah, good point. Nobody good knows point. him. Uh, is he is he is he is he is he famous for it? No. 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 Right? And and you know what he probably did? Is he probably shorted it with like 10 bucks and cross leverage at like 20%. Mm -hmm. And then when it got down here, he changed his leverage. Mm -hmm. It's probably what he did. So he can show this massive, massive percentage, but he's got 20 bucks in it. Mm -hmm. Hell, I would have done the same thing. I would have put 20 bucks up there. So my point is, is nobody cares right like mm -hmm. yeah it's fun to joke around and you know whatever like everybody you know having fun sharing charts but nobody cares if you catch this what matters is your bank account and if you're catching a short here right at the break and you have a one percent stop loss and for some reason the break just comes back and it like pops you well that's unlucky but you lost not even one percent right or if you wanted to be safe you could put your stop loss even a little bit back here right just just to be safe but you're pretty sure we're not coming back this far. You know, I mean, it, just my point is, is that the risk is a lot less here than it is up here. And, and nobody's going to know you any better for this. The only person that's going to thank you is your bank account when you're actually making money through this part of the zone, as opposed to trying to catch this and, and potentially losing money, you know? And that's also why like, man, I was so scared the other day. Like I, I was like, Oh man, you know, all these people are in my trades. And, oh man. Because, I saw this type of formation forming 
And I'm like, dude, this is, this is scary. We just got to close. Right. I don't, I don't need to be the guy that everybody's like, Oh, yo, you know, he caught the top, like what a trade, blah, blah. Like I don't need to be that guy. Right. Mm-hmm. I would rather everybody get out safely and no money lost. Or if, if there was money lost, it's extremely minimal, extremely minimal. And, and then we just wait for higher prices. And, and so that's why, again, that's why on ETH, I'm, I'm, there's no trade going to be called here. If I do call a trade, it's going to be after we create more structure to the downside. Bitcoin, thankfully, is respecting the low. It's not an expanded flat or a flat structure or anything like that. Um, it is a corrective sequence. As long as this sequence here doesn't break this, then this is a 618 of the larger move. Okay. So this is where, again, it gets tricky, guys. Um, here, let me change the color so it, it matches. Sorry. Okay. So we have our ABC. Okay. This is the extension, right, of the ABC. And <clears throat> if we were going to, let's go back and, and talk about, if you guys remember the retracement values, okay, when we're talking about motives, this should be a motive wave to the downside on a larger frame, okay? Should be, if our count is correct, right? Because you can see I have, I have a, a, a bigger count here. So from the C, we should have one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Should, as long as everything plays out the way that it should. And I know this is really messy. Sorry. I'll, I'll clean it up. Just give me a second. Okay. So that being said, and, and again, I'll, I'll post these values. So you guys have been writing. I don't expect you guys to memorize just for me talking. Okay. But we should have a really nice retracement here. God dang it. Kenny, what's wrong with me, dude? I'm doing this the wrong way every day. I was going to say it's Friday, but it's not. (laughs) (laughs) So we're, we're pushing. So remember a wave two goes anywhere from 50 to 85% of wave one. Okay. So right now we're at, Where do we peek out at? A 618. Okay. So technically we could be done, right? It just matters if we break this peak or not. If we don't break this peak, then we can absolutely be done in continuation of the downside. Okay. The likely is that we're going to continue pushing up. That's why I'm in a long. Um, and we can see levels of a 705, a 786, as much as an 886 as a retracement of wave one starting from the C, right? This is the wave one. Bang, bang. Okay. Um, and I know this gets messy, guys. Just bear with me. It, it's it's crucial. Here, I can get rid of this, actually. Oops. No. What the heck? Hit the wrong button. Let me delete some of these internals real quick for you guys, too, because this might make it easier to see. Sorry. Oh, it is Friday shit. There. There we go. Okay. So that's probably a lot easier to see this way. Okay. So... Of our wave one down, the wave two retracement can go as much as 886. Obviously, we hope it doesn't go to the 886 because that would invalidate all of this. And more than likely, we're probably making the double correction, as I explained, to higher prices up here. Okay. So it is a very dangerous zone to try to catch a short, but but this is where USDX comes into play. Okay. This is why I use USDX so much when it comes to trading this. Okay. Um, because with USDX, it helps us determine where is everything going to go. Now I will say this morning after seeing USDX and Bitcoin, um, I have some concerns about how all this looks. Okay. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. So our extension zone, I would like to think that we extend to about here, roughly, okay? Um, This would put us, and actually, here's a great point. Retracement of the one, two. We have an impulse to the upside. We can't max out over, or we can't breach 1618 on the impulse. Otherwise, it's invalidated. 
We also have a fib as a retracement of the larger impulse to the downside right here. There is a good chance that we can reject right in this zone and we can almost snipe this. So, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I want guys to understand why I put so much shit on my charts. Okay. The more I can have that starts to have confluence, right? I know everybody likes that word confluence. It gets messy, but the more you practice with it, the more you, you know, and that's why I changed my colors for all this stuff and, and do different shit. Like here, let me, I can actually change this to, let's put it this color. Ooh, I don't like that color. It hurts my eyes. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That works. That's a little better. The contrast is better. So um, this confluence right here tells me that we should see a rejection here. If we don't, that's why my stop loss is going to be pretty tight. It's going to be, you know, right up in here. Um, not very much farther than this. So uh, I, I guess in, in summary, it's kind of where it gets tricky. Um, I was losing myself for a second. I was thinking about some other shit. It's kind of where it gets tricky, right? Understanding which direction are we going with everything? Like, is it going down? Is it going up? Do I have all these waves and oh my God, my head hurts. Holy shit. Extension, retracement, ABC, corrective, impulse, motive. What the fuck, dude, right? Uh, so this, you know, when, when asked where do I get my time frames from or where, you know, what, where do I chart? I, I start my charts on the daily overall, okay? And I take a time, in the, in, in any time I open a chart, I take a minute and I open it up and I look and I go, okay, this is what we're doing. Oh, we're in wave three of a, like we're in wave five of a larger wave three, right? According to my chart right now, as you can see, I have a, a wave three, four and a yellow five down here. Okay. Which is completing the wave three of a larger three, four, five of a larger ABC, which here's our good old friend expanded flat, by the way. Okay. Again, why this is such a deep zone. It's such a big zone. There's no telling where the expanded flat stops. So, uh, but I won't get back into that because we just spent like 20 minutes talking about it. So point being is I look at my overalls. I understand that my direction is down. It's down, 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 down. Okay? That's my direction right now. hundred percent. Does that mean that we go down today? No. Does that mean we just tank today or tomorrow or whatever? No. My trend is down. So when I can determine my daily trend is down, then I can get into my four hour and I can figure out what's my four hour trend. Okay. Well here, the four hour trend is still down. Even here, the four hour trend is still down. Okay. You notice we didn't breach this, this wick. Okay. So here my trend is still down, even though we're in a counter trend or corrective sequence, the trend is still down because we held the low. That has actually brought the four hour sequence as being bullish. Okay. Even more so, the hourly sequence, because we didn't make a new low here, the hourly sequence is also bullish. Okay. So, I have two bullish sequence indicators here. Okay. Makes me nervous trying to take a short when we have the strength. Okay. That's why these are risky. That's why I told everybody to close. Yes, we missed money, but guys, I'm the trader that's going to fucking not risk everybody's portfolio to just try to make some cash. I saw a lot of these signs. I saw these bullish indicators, right? Here. Not an indicator is in something I download or whatever I pay for. A bullish indicator is that in a downtrend, we're not making new lows. That's a, that's a short-term bullish indicator. We failed new lows in both of these sequences. Okay, Once we fail those new lows, it turns this sequence into a bullish sequence. Period. End of story. So on shorter frames, we're in a bullish sequence. And this is why it's so imperative to start at a 24-hour in creating your waves and setting your waves on 24 hour, because you have to know when the sequence changes and what time frame it changes, because that's what your waves depend on. 
I can't just open a chart and look and go, well, this is impulse. That's corrective. That, that, that's not how it works. Okay. You have to see the time frame sequences and break it down from your higher frames to your lower frames. And as those begin to change, it, it can change the structure which, in which we're trading. Okay. This is also why I'm long here. Two bullish indicators. Okay. No new low. No new low. And in fact, we have such a reaction from the low that I'm short term bullish. So again, I mean, are we going to try to trade this? Yeah, I'm going to take a, I'm going to take a shot. Trading is risky. I'm not saying I don't take trades because I'm scared. Trading's risky. Okay. What I want to see to identify this zone is exactly what we were talking about earlier is taking my extensions and retracements which I already had up here, but it was really messy. I just want to be able to talk without you guys, you know, going cross-eyed. Um, <laughs> you know, that's why I've determined my zones up here based on the extensions of this impulse wave and this ABC. Okay. Um, so a lot of this stuff I'm going to put in literature. I know I'm just kind of like talking at you guys and showing you charts. I'm sure a lot of guys are probably like, holy shit, that's a lot of info. I will put a lot of this like on paper and I'll put some documents together that can talk about the retracement levels. Um, I already uh, have a spreadsheet with retracement and extension levels and all of that, that I was putting together this morning. Um, so I will, it'll all be written out. So you guys have something solid um, to look at and know, like, and, and here's, here's what I recommend. If you want to know, okay, how am I going to apply this text? What, how am I going to know What's corrective? What's impulsive? What's this? What's that? Okay. I don't mind doing like a weekly chart that I publish on a Monday and I'll just publish it through Trading View and you guys can open it up and that way you can expand it and contract it. Um, hold on. Sorry. Uh, my wife's texting me. Sure, Chick fil A. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Spicy Deluxe. Spicy Deluxe. Dr. Pepper. All right. Sorry. Uh, we, uh, we don't have Chick fil A in here, man. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, for know, you. I know. I know. I am sorry for myself. I man. feel your pain, bro. <laughs> we feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, when I went to California, I tasted it. I'm like, fuck, bro. We, like, it's like Chick-fil-A, bro. Open only one store here, man. What you gonna lose? <laughs> Just do it. Do a charity store for me, man. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's, uh, um, what you would call it. So that's, that's why I've been so bullish on this. You know, I mean, ETH. And this is the scary part about ETH is that ETH made a new low, right? So you're saying like, okay, well, Tex, you have all these bullish indicators here. Uh, why, you know, what about ETH? Why are you so bullish on ETH? Well, that's, that's the contrarian thing. It, with the new low and the fact that we have reacted from that new low so fucking powerful is an extremely scary situation for me, trying to short ETH, okay? Not scary if you're bullish, right? I don't want to get it twisted. It's not scary if you're bullish, but it's very scary if you're trying to short because it's, it's like they say, don't catch a falling knife. Well, you know, don't, don't strap yourself to the tip of a fucking rocket ship, right? <laughs> and try to, and try to parachute off. Okay. Nice. This, this thing truly, and I know I've got some funny shit here or whatever. He's too scary, you know, whatever. Um, you know, I was joking around a little bit cause I was fucking bored as hell on that call this morning when you guys were in the voice chat and I was trying to make some people laugh. The bottom line is there's a big liquidity pool here. Um, and, and, and I know that based on a couple of these highs and I'm sure all you FVG guys and SMC guys are going to agree with this. Um, but this is a huge liquidity pool and it, it can probably even go higher. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't, but this is based on, you know, and I'll show you how I know that there's a liquidity pool. We're gonna go. Through. Yeah, it's, go it's ahead. It's kind of weird, but but like my trading style is like so 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 similar to yours. Like the, we have the same exact liquidity pools and like the same exact things, but I I never use the uh, LU waves, and I I bet you don't use my trading. You know, 
So it's, <clears> it's kind of weird, but like all the levels, all the levels you're pointing out, I had on my chart. Like each one, even even the the BTC one, <clears> I had on my chart. Yeah. I didn't take the long because I'm not gonna lie to you, I hate taking longs in a bear market. But um, I should have had taken the long with you. So so and here's and that's a great point. I, I want to bring this up too. So like the SMC or FE, I don't even know what they call that thing. Um, a, a buddy of mine does it, and he's fucking amazing at it. I I, mm-hmm. I love his charts. Um, yeah. He's a great trader. He just doesn't like to analyze for people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's it's not. He's he's a whale. He just trades his own shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's happy. He fucking day trades for a living. You know, he lives somewhere in Europe and he fucking goes to the beach and on vacation or whatever. But he's an amazing SMC trader. I mean, yeah. the the guy is like. I'll be like, hey, I'm going to long here. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my chart. I was going to long like 10 bucks lower than you. And I'm like, you fucker. Like, you know, whatever. But what we figured out is, and I I believe it's true for a lot, is that the SMC and FVG is based on, it's it's built on the principles of Elliott Wave. I'm not saying the guys that created it. I won't be surprised. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that the guys that created it no Elliott wave. Maybe they do. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know the people who created it, but it's the same market principles is what I mean. Right. So yeah. you have certain principles of liquidity, support, resistance, blah, blah, blah. Well, Elliott wave is an old school, albeit more complicated, but more accurate in my opinion, old school way of determining where those levels are. And, you know, I, I think it's best put, um, uh, and I'm, this is this is not my words. I'm just going to read an excerpt here um, from some Elliott Wave literature that I have uh, to, to that it just kind of describes Ralph. You can find it on Google if you just Google, you know, who created Elliott Wave. It says all this shit. But I'll save you guys the the the, the, the Google. Um, let me see. It's not that one. Let me see. Um. Yeah. So. It was just a way of, of, of like, you know, when people get bullish or when people get bearish and there's a sell off and there's fear in the market or there's bullishness in the market and they're trying to, they're trying to, you know, buy into something, right? Elliott Wave does a really good, get over here and lay down, lay down, stop pacing. You're driving me nuts. Lay down. Sorry. My dog's being crazy. Um, it, it it's a way that when you use the Fibonacci and the waves and, and, and the, the equations that kind of created it all, like it, it almost guesses with a pretty reliable accuracy, not a perfect accuracy, but pretty reliable. Where are you going to get fear in the market? Where are you going to get, you know, strength in the market? And that's also what the SMC is derived on is on fear, strength, you know, it's smart money concept, right? Well, smart money says, when there's a lot of fear, you buy because everybody's selling. Okay. Smart money says when there's a lot of strength, you sell because everybody's buying. Right. Yeah. It's exactly. the same like foundation. Um, mm-hmm. and so it's just a different way of looking at it. And these guys may have found a really cool way to like, you don't realize it's Elliott wave, but it kind of is in, in the same sense, or maybe it just that they found a way to simplify the process Whereas Elliott Wave is still an old school kind of complicated way, personally, and, and Elliott Wave is not that complicated. I don't want to say like it's out of reach for anybody. It's not. I mean, you can absolutely learn the basics and even intermediate levels of Elliott Wave um, within a few months, a few weeks, even, and, and just to understand your charts. Okay, mm-hmm. um, but to really get into the full depth, like I'm not. This is this, today's like introduction, right? And I probably threw a little bit more that I should have in the introduction, but like, you know, why do I have these trend lines here? Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's squeezing and we have a different type of sequence here. Okay. I mean, these are crucial types of things to understand. You can have leading diagonals, ending diagonals. I'm not going to get into all those cause it'll like, I'll really fuck you guys up today if I, if I do that. Um, but you know, these, these different types of corrections, you know, this is a triangle, right? Um, and a triangle can really only occur in a correction, but this is a triangle. And this is also what helped us determine that this was uh, an expanded flat forming because we have a triangle here 
And a triangle usually dumps out the bottom side much deeper um, than your than the start point of your correction. So unfortunately, there wasn't enough um, swings here to spot the triangle early. Typically, you'll have a few more swings. And then we can say like, like imagine price did like this. Okay. If price had done this, we could have identified the flat early. Okay. And really seen the flat and gone, Oh, this is a triangle. The triangle is going to dump. Okay. It's probably going to be a flat. Cause we're going to break this way. Like you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. The market doesn't always provide that for us. It doesn't yeah. always give us a clear indication of it. So um, the intermediate and the expert level type, Elliott wave stuff gets into more of this and really understanding the deeper sequences, the more complicated sequences, your basics and just knowing motive, corrective retracement, um, you know, extension. These are, that's really the concepts I'm trying to get across today anyways, um, for guys to just understand, like, here's how I can plot a path and here's how I can chart it out. And so, to finish, because I'm, I'm going to probably wrap this up in like 10 or 15 minutes. I know I talk a lot, but it's worth it. So to finish, there's two things I want to I want to bring up. One, uh, and I was saying this earlier, I'll post weekly charts that are published that you guys can like open up and zoom in and, and, and move around. And I'll put my wave counts up. I'm not saying that my wave counts are church. I'm just saying that they're pretty fucking accurate for the most part. I hope most of you have realized that by now. Um, you know, me and Kiko have a lot of in, uh, confluence. Um, you know, sometimes we differ on some things. Doesn't mean either one of us is wrong. Um, as you know, we were talking earlier, you could have different wave counts end up in the same place. Sometimes, um, generally it's pretty structured and a lot of waivers, if they're good waivers, they're going to have a really, uh, their charts are going to look extremely similar. Um, so I don't mind posting a weekly, like guideline, right? So like at the beginning of the week, we were here and then I could just post like all of my wave counts like back here. So you guys can see the overall wave counts. And, and, and this way you can apply some of the basics of Elliott wave, right? And, and I'll post like, Hey guys, we're going to impulse here. You know, it's a C leg. We have an ABC correction. So we know we're going to impulse. Let me go ahead and, and post my one, two. And then that way guys can take the one, two, and they can put a retracement on here and guys can play their own breakout trades. Mm -hmm. I don't always have to call the breakout for you. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, because that's my goal is I want guys to, to identify their own waves and be able to play their own trades on this stuff. Like not fully dependent upon me or, or anybody else of like, Oh, let me, and, and, and I get it. Some guys, they just want signals or whatever. Great. Yeah. Like, but I mean, imagine, imagine you want to go on a vacation then what, what does the guy yeah. that, that that is following you do, you know? Or let's yeah. say you you made enough from trading, you invested in real estate or whatnot, and you don't want to trade anymore. What does the guy that was following you do, you know? So Exactly. The, the, whole, point, the whole point of all of this, guys, for the guys <coughs> that are listening is, you know, to learn from everybody, right? To learn from me, learn from text, learn from everybody we bring into the table to teach you guys in the chats you can learn. But it's eventually to become your own traders, man. Everybody, you know, we all start following calls and that's cool, right? Everybody does it. Um, but it gets to the point where you got to cut the cord and learn to do this yourself. And then there's no excuses, man. One of the fit, one of the most top excuses I always hear is, oh, I don't have the time. Then become a swing trader. You, you'll find the time. You know, if you're swing trading and yeah. you're doing big moves like that, then you don't have to stare at your chart every day like I do. I'm a day trader. I'm a scalper. So I'm looking at these charts constantly trying to find patterns that match and things like that. You know, you, you can do that in bigger time frames. You can make the time, you know, don't find excuses. There's ways where there's a will, there's a way. And, and you know, when it comes to trading, you just heard it from us. There's so many different styles of trading that if you actually do take the time to try to find it, you find your niche, you know, you, this is all theory based, right? Like you try different theories, you're going to get some wrong, you're going to get some right. You know, this is where you pick apart, you know, all these theories and try to find your system. But there's, you know, there's, there's ways. There, there, there isn't, there isn't a wrong way. Like exactly. uh, even Tech said, uh, he said he has a friend that only trades supporting resistance, but he make a lot of money. So like, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's really, there's not like a bad trading style. If it works yeah. for you, it works for you. You know, who exactly. cares if it works for anybody else? Exactly. So the, the other thing I want to, to show you guys as far as a trading setup. Okay. 
Um, then let me go to, to this one here. Cause I know I showed y'all the breakout one, which I'll, I'll make a little chart on that and I'll, I'll, I'll do all that stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll post it. So you have the literature. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Oh, and real quick, I just want to make a point. This is also why I use the USD chart on Bitstamp. Okay. Nothing else. So I want to show you something. This is Bitfinex. Bitfinex made a lower low here. Bitstamp did not. Okay. We are reacting to my waves according to Bitstamp. Had I been using a Bitfinex chart, this lower low, I would have called an expanded flat in Bitcoin. Okay. Bitcoin is not an expanded flat yet. It's not. Ethereum is, but Bitcoin is not. Okay. So that's why I use Bitstamp and BTC USD. Your futures charts are always going to extend well beyond where the actual levels are. Okay. I, I do not recommend trying to get crazy with Elliott Wave on USDT charts. If you want to use it just for a basic guideline, great. Not a problem. But if you're really going to get into Elliott Wave and figure exact levels, like don't use USDT chart. You will, it, it, you'll get stopped out. You won't hit levels. It's going to be so inaccurate. I promise you. Okay. So I want to make that like really clear before I go on to this next trade setup. Um, just please, please, if you're going to get deep into Elliott Wave, use the Bitstamp chart. It is the best one for Elliott Wave when it comes to crypto. Please. Okay. My two cents on that. All right. Now, that being said, on Bitstamp, this is an ABC correction here. Okay. A, B, C, right? We normally take our extension and we go, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Here's our extension, right? <clears throat> now, um, typically, your C leg is impulsive, right? Which we have charted. Impulsive. This looks like my, my chart on my other one, right? Easy peasy. If you don't want to try to chart the impulse and figure out a breakout trade of the impulse, okay? Albeit this is the safer trade with less risk and it's, and it's a better RR. If you want to swing this and you want to get a little lazier, okay? I'm all for lazy. <laughs> I like being lazy. Um, I just have some time today. I, I don't, I had work calls this morning, but I'm chilling for right now and I'm gonna go to the gym later. So I had time to do this. The breakout trade, I'm sorry. Um, this is more of what I call a mechanical setup. Um, you can call it a, um, like an ignition, you know, I don't know a good word for it. I haven't named it yet, but I, I'll figure out a name for it. But basically what it is, is when you have your ABC, so if you guys see me post an ABC on a chart, these don't always hit, okay? They don't always hit, but a lot of times they do. You, what you're looking for is we have a zero point at the B. You want to, and you'll have to add the two five and the five. I mentioned this earlier before we started this slide, okay? This is why I have these two levels here. You want to see from the B, a breach of the 0.5 level. Okay. You want to see a return to the two five. So you want to see a breach of this. Okay. We'll call this ignition. Okay. We well breached this. It was a phenomenal breach. Okay. Then you want to see a return to the two five. Okay. And I don't mean a tap. I mean a true breach. Okay. You don't want to just see a little like ding and a reflection. You want to, you want it to, to with confidence. Okay. So what you can do is, and this is why I call it ignition is when this, when you get your ignition here, right? Your motor's running, blah, 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 blah it's chugging. Well, you know, treat it like an old car. You got to give it some time to get to the point where you can start driving. So I'll set my, entry entries down in this zone. Okay. Now this would be a long play and you just take profits all the way up to the 1.0. Okay. Now the RR is a little bit different on this and the stop loss is, this is not a scalpers trade. Okay. Want to make that clear. 
this is not a scalp. This is a swing because your stop loss is going to be down here below the zero point. Because if we break this B, then the move is over. Okay. Like if we came up here and then we just went blah like this, well, then your ABC was wrong. It's not actually an ABC. But if you're using my charts, 95% of the time, they're going to be accurate. I, I make mistakes too. Everybody does. Uh, but 95% of the time, my chart will be accurate. So considering this is an ABC, we broke the half fib going up. We came back. We tapped a 2.5. Take profit, take profit, take profit, full close. Could you have ridden this up? Yeah. If you want to leave a runner, go for it. I'm just going to get like how you want to modify a trade is completely up to you. I'm going to teach the proper way, which is a full close at the 1.0. But you can see here, it's a 9.35% trade with an RR of 3.06. You're always going to get a minimum of a 3 to 1 RR on this trade setup. Always. I mean, it's just 3.0. It's like the same every time. Um, the percentages can be different based on how big of a trade it is. This is a smaller frame correction. Okay. So the R, I mean, the percentage is smaller. It's nine, 10%. But even if you took this at 10 X, that's a hundred percent move. And it's a hundred percent over, let's see, it started on the 21st and we crossed on the 26th. So in five days, you made a hundred percent of your investment. I, I don't try to make the quick money. I'll be the first one to not even go into a trade because it looks too risky. I like longer moves. I'm a swing trader. So for me, this is a really actually a fast trade, right? In five days, I made a hundred percent of my investment. If I put a thousand bucks in, I get 2000 out. Right. And it's really nice. It's generally safe. Um, the uh, the win rate on this is about as long as it hits, the win rate on this is about seventy five percent. So, if you played the exact same amount of money, and let me put that in long term perspective, if you played the exact same amount of money every single time and put your exact stop loss every single time, the exact same, and you set your targets exactly the same every single time on this, even the ones that you lose you're still going to be profitable because three out of four, you're winning generally. Okay. So overall, if all you ever did was trade this exact setup, you would be a profitable trader. You're going to lose some that's trading. Everybody loses. I don't know anybody with a hundred percent win rate all the time. And text, if they do text, say they text. have a hundred percent, they're full of shit. Say that okay? one more time. Text. Uh, say that one not more even time big for banks have hundred percent. They lose too. So, Text, text. Say that one more time for the so they can understand. Because these guys, some of these guys swear that when these guys, oh, I'm a hundred percent. I'm like, yeah, sure. No, nobody. <laughs> I, I, don't, I won't even fucking talk to guys that say they're a hundred percent because I, I don't, I don't like because they're full of shit. Personal friends in my life, yeah. That's I don't hang out with people that lie or try yeah. to be somebody else, right? Exactly. I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to call somebody out and be a dick, but I'm gonna tell you right now. Anybody that's ever said I have a hundred percent win rate has either only ever taken like two or three trades in their whole life or they're full of shit. <laughs> no, no, guys, 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 y'all are laughing. In the group, I have right. 100% success rate, okay? You took, you took two trades, motherfucker. I don't want to hear it. Two trades. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm talking about, uh, and I guess to, to be more clear, I'm talking about over spans of time, years, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody over a five-year span has a 100% rate. Nobody oh. over even a year span. I think... Thanks. See you in five years, then. See you. <laughs> I won't take I mean, a single trade. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, years. I'm me personally. I'm probably like sixty-five percent. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and a lot of guys look at that and they're like, oh, that's sixty-five percent. But yeah. bro, I've been trading for a long time. Exactly. Okay, number one, exactly. and number two, this was the only setup that I used to trade for a long time. Was just this. That's it. I didn't trade fucking anything else. It was this simple setup. I waited for the ignition over the half fib, and then I waited for a touch to the 0.25. Does it always work? No. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples where it doesn't work, and I'll show you a few examples of where it actually does work. Okay. Um, let me get to my daily chart here. And wait, remember, wait, wait. also, yeah, go Sorry. ahead. 
Uh, something I wanted to add. Win rate doesn't mean shit because you can actually have like 5% win rate and still be profitable. You know? Yes. So winning rate is like, it's full of shit. Like if somebody talks about his winning rate, yours, you know, he's a bad trader, you know? If somebody says, oh, yo, look at my win rate. I'm 100% or I'm 95 or 96 or 97. Bro, this isn't trading, you know? Like who cares? If you have good risk management, you can basically hit like hit stop loss eight out of 10 times. But the two out of 10 times that it hit take profit, you made more profits. So you're profitable. Mm. But your win rate is 20%. Mm. So can, can I add one thing to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. Please. It's the same, it's the same with percentage gain. People yeah. like showing yeah. off with our 1,000 yeah. percentage gains, yeah. but if you had not the same position size, it doesn't matter. And, and, mm -hmm. and, one, and one more thing to add to that. Uh, I can almost guarantee all you guys that the ones that do post 1,000, 2,000 percent, it's not their initial investment, unless like Tech said, where they're only putting in ten dollars and just throwing that shit in there and leaving it there and checking it, you know, yeah. later. Yo, it's hard for you to look at your money and see yourself up five percent, five, let's say even five hundred percent or two hundred percent on your initial investment and not want to take something because I think we've all been there at the beginning where we're all like, Oh yeah, I want more. Oh, it's up a hundred, I want two hundred, and then that shit goes negative 200% and you're closing for a loss when you could have closed or trimmed something at a positive 100. I guarantee yeah. you guys, anybody yeah. that's reached a thousand percent, myself included, I've always mm -hmm. left about 20, 10, 15% of my margin for my original entry at that point, yeah. leaving it to the end. Yeah. It's not my original fucking margin that I started to trade with and I'm pushing it. No, guys, don't, don't let that shit, you know, throw you guys off. Like, and again, that's how some people sell their discords. They're like, oh yeah, we're making thousand percenters every day and yeah you know like it's 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 trading man. no even even my my alert the other day and, and so to to add on to that just a little bit mm -hmm. and, and and i do this as part of, of of my method so when we enter a trade you'll see me enter a trade 5x 10x right a nice amount of margin after my trims usually after the second trim mm -hmm. i'll increase my leverage to like 30 or 40 percent if i have another trade coming up Right. So like on this move to the upside that we just made, I increased my leverage as we went up because it freed up margin for me. Right. Yep. I don't I don't want to have a bunch of margin tied up in a trade that is going well. What's the point? So at the end of it, at the end of it, I was at 100 X. Did I start to trade there? No, I started to trade at 5 X or 10 X, I think on, on Bitcoin. So I started at 10. But once we hit TP2, where I took. That was 75% of my position was gone at that point. Okay. It's out. Profits taken. Then my leverage went to 100x and I let the other 25% run to 21K. You know? So, yeah, it, no, you guys are 100% right. Even I do it, but I don't go tell people I make thousand percent trades all the time. Although I did brag about that one. <laughs> typically, it's, you know, like, <laughs> but typically it's, it's, it, you know, and I'll make it clear and I'll alert, hey, we start at this leverage. We start. And I only change the leverage because there's fees involved. I only change the leverage if I have another trade coming up. Okay. So like on corrective, you'll see me do that. But if I'm trading a breakout of an impulse, then I don't do that. There's no need because we're, we're going to fucking zoom and I'm not trying to catch the bottom. I'll just leave my margin in there. The fees are low, close my trade and I'm done. Mm. I only change leverage whenever we trade the corrective side because we're trading the extreme. And I'll try to catch the wave up and then catch the wave down, right? So that's the only time that I ever change my leverage. Otherwise, I always keep my leverage the same. Um, Want to show real quick two setups. This is one setup where that trade didn't work, okay? This is the run back in 17 to 20K. I don't know who was all trading back then. I was. Um, and I was looking for this setup, okay? You can see on the way down. I'm sorry. We made our B wave here. This is, let me identify it so you guys can see. So here's our ABC waves, okay? Now, unfortunately, on the daily, kind of shitty, but unfortunately, on the daily, we did not come back and touch, okay? So after we made B, we breached the half fib, but it never, it never came back up because this candle was straight down. We came close, right? And it... If I FOMO'd, yeah, it would have worked out, sure. But I don't, we don't FOMO, okay? 
and never actually came back to the 0.25. So does this setup always play out? No. Okay. So I don't want to make guys think that you're going to be able to trade this setup just every single day. Like, Oh my God, this is my new setup. I'm going to play this all the time. It's a great setup. I love it, but it doesn't always play out. And even though we came close, I mean, this is really close right here. Okay. We, 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 we breached. Wait, where was the breach? Yeah, we breached the half fib here. Got close. We came within 400 bucks, but we didn't touch it. So I didn't take this trade because at this time, this is all I knew as far as a real trade setup. This is the only trade setup I had ever used back in 17. And I used it for fucking stocks, and this is everything. This is all I ever used. Okay. I've created a few more ever since I started really trading crypto. Um, or not created, but I've looked into more Elliott Wave setups. Um, it's a pretty common one to trade the corrections um, the way that I do. Um, I did not create that. I'm not going to act like I did. That was not me who created that. Um, that's a true like Elliott Wave entry. Okay. Um, but let's go look at the four hour on this correction up here. And I want to show you guys, this was a really fun correction to try to trade this um, because we did. So, oops, slacking, bro, I'm slacking. <laughs> it's Friday. Okay, so this was a really fun correction to trade this. So as you can see, we make our B wave. We didn't touch the half fib. No ignition, okay? No ignition yet. Then what happened? We break the half fib, okay? Ignition. Yes, right? Oh, no, it's running away. Oh, no. And see, this is the other key. If it breaks the A wave, it's invalid, right? If it breaks the A and just keeps going, then it's invalidated, right? It's not coming back. But if it doesn't break the A, which it didn't here, it comes all the way back. And look at that. Two touches to the 0.25. Perfect. It was so beautiful. Caught the long here, took two profit targets, right? When it came back, tightened my stop loss up to halfway, re-entered and added more margin. Okay. And then look at this. Target, 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 bang, done. Okay. So we actually took a lot more on this. We took one, two, three, four, five, six profit targets on this one. So this is also a setup that can happen if you have your waves labeled correctly, okay? Um, this was an amazing trade that we took. It was a lot of fun. A lot of money was made here. Um, you know, a lot of guys criticized me because we ended up shorting up here too. Um, they thought that, you know, I was full of shit. They're like, oh no, it's fucking bullish. We just made all time high. <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, we're not. Uh, it's, we're going down. Trust me. <laughs> But anyways, um, this was a really, really, really fun trade to, to, to play. So I just wanted you guys to see in other like higher frames and market conditions where this, this works. Um, now, I spoke earlier about the time. You know, if we were doing the move today and yesterday, the or past couple of days, you know, this move took five days. and We could have taken the, the targets. This move was a much longer move from the initial, what was that? 7th of March all the way to the 30th. So this is a three week play, right? It took three weeks to get all of our targets, but it was totally worth it. I mean, the final, the final target, um, produced a, uh, 25% return unleveraged. I mean, it was a fucking great trade. I can't, I don't know, know how else to say it. And so you can break this trading setup down on the smaller frames if you want. You can even do it on a, on a, on a 15. Um, let me get down here. So if you really want to get like crazy, okay, let's take the move that we just went through, right? And as long as you have everything set up correctly, right? So if you would have looked at my chart and gone, okay, A, B, well, let's use this setup here, okay? From the B, we slice, right? That's considered ignition. That's a clean break. We come back, we touch the 2.5, and we're out here. Did we go deeper? Yeah, but that's okay. We got a nice 
Nice, nice trade here. Unleveraged 2%. And that was from the start of it. We would have ignition here, 27th. The first time we touched down here was the 27th. So that's an intraday trade. So as a scalper, again, I understand you guys want to use higher leverage. Something like this is probably pretty safe. Like, let's actually chart this out, right? So as a scalper, you could have taken this trade here on a smaller frame, and you would have had a 2.9. So, well, sorry. Hold on. There you go. 2.95, almost a three. I, my levels are probably a little off. If I if I dialed these in, it should be a three. Yeah, I'm I'm higher here than I should be. There. 2.99. Close enough. You get the point. So um this would have been a really nice intraday trade. You could have taken a 50x here and hit a hundred percent within one day. Bang. Okay. And this is well, this is even less than a day. This is what? Three, four. It's like three or four hours because these are 15 minute candles. So your initial entry would have been, well, actually it would have been here. My fault. Your initial entry would have been back here. So yeah, intraday, it wouldn't have been, it had been four or five hours. Okay. So this setup works on all frames, but you just have to, you have to be aware of where the ABC is. That's the key. You can't just go throw in this, this fib setup on any fucking wave and think that you're going to, you're going to profit. So, um, that's why I'm going to try to do my best to post charts. Um, but also like, you know, if you see that my chart is, uh, that I have three completing here, well, we discussed that four is always corrective, right? So we discussed. So let's say you accidentally thought this was your a and B. Okay. Let's say you accidentally, you know, you know what I mean? Which it, it, it can happen. Hey, I just started Elliott Wave. I'm learning. I see three swings down. Bang, bang, bang. Three swings is the A wave. I've got three swings up here. Bang, bang, bang. That's a B wave. You know, Tex told me, hey, this is this is tradable. I mean, it probably would have worked out, but the fact that we went straight to a one before coming back is a no-go. But you wouldn't have even triggered this trade. You see what I'm saying? It would have never even actually triggered if you would have followed the rules. Okay. Because we're calling this a B wave. So it comes down through the half, breaches the one, instant no go. So that tells you that your ABC is wrong. Okay. That, like, this is not a, like, if you would have thought that this was going to be your ABC instead. Okay. So just pay attention to the amount of swings. I can't stress that enough. That'll help you determine whether it's corrective or impulsive or emotive. Um, Three, seven, 11 swings corrective and five, nine, 13 swings motive. Okay. Um, and a swing is a new high, new low. Okay. Um, so, you know, from here we have one, two, three, let me see. No, one, two, almost two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven swings here about. This might be the, 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 the five and six here. Um, but we have seven swings here. We have three swings up, right? So corrective, correct. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. This is right because A can be impulsive. We have five swings here. One, two, three, four, five. It's impulsive, right? Which A can be impulsive. Three swings up. So this is B. Perfect. And then we have one, two, three, four, five basically swings down. Or, you know, so we know that's impulsive. Um, so that way you can take your trades, right? So if you would have accidentally thought that your ABC was back here somewhere, this trade would have never triggered no money lost fine. Um, but if you use my charts and you can start to learn how to identify your corrective sequence within, uh, my charts, um, this is a really, 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 um, profitable setup for everybody. So any questions? I know it was two hours of a lot of shit. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> nah, it was good, man. It was good. I'm here. It was great. Thank you, Tex. I, I love the lesson. 
Yeah, facts. <laughs> facts. Super dope lesson, man. I mean, was it was it helpful? Did you guys like you know give me some feedback too, man? Like, let me know. Like, so you know, I, I'll tell you this as far as me, bro. Like, one of my problems is always uh kind of like getting the breakout trades right, um, anticipating it too early or something. I love the fact that uh Elliot Wave kind of gives me and even where you have your C right that that's the always the retracement right there. Like I'm looking at just the lines even without having to make them, and I'm seeing a breakout there, retracing to that C and then taking off that should always be my entry instead of always trying to kind of you know rushing the breakout and then i'm catching the shit at the top and then i always have to dca where the c you know an a is so i, I need to be more patient and then i think elliot wave me learning this will give me that patience man to really like wait for that c wait for it to you know retrace and then enter super close tight stop loss because there's always a demand i'm looking and there's always seems to be a you know small demand zone by the c so that's perfect right like if it doesn't you know, take off on C, then you, your stop loss is right there, you know, minimal fucking uh, loss, and, you know, you continue going about your way, but uh, I like it, bro. Thank you. I learned a lot, man. Anybody well, else? Good, man. Share? Yeah. Is this being um, uh, filmed, by the way? I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, recorded? of course. Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. Because I missed that at the beginning because I was walking the dog. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, the retrace is important. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, understanding the Fibonacci, I think, is going to be probably the most crucial thing for anybody. Um, once you get the hang of the Fibonacci, and and again, I will put that stuff on, um, uh, like, uh, in, a, in, a, in a document form, so you guys have it, okay? But once you have those levels and you understand, like, how high are we going to go? Like, even now, I mean, we can take this right? Because that's probably our one, two here. So our third wave, this guy should reach to about here today. We should see this level today. And see, I, I just, just based on drawing up a simple extension, because I know that we're, you know, this is one, two, right? One, two. How much did we retrace here? Right? Um, God dang, I'm doing it all day. What's wrong with me? I swear, dude. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, as long as we retraced the minimum of 14, which we actually went a little deeper, we went to a 382. Perfect. Did we pass the, the half fib? No, we didn't pass the half fib. Did we touch the one? No, we didn't touch the one. See the gap? So I'm sorry, this is one. This is one, two. So it doesn't matter. This is one, two. So, you know, we have a good retracement, right? Because the retracement can come all the way. It has to be. And I, I forgot, as a, as a one, two, we have to have a minimum retracement of a, 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 I think a 382. I have to go back and double check. I'm pretty sure. Uh, so we got the retracement that we needed. It came back. And now we're just going to keep going. So we know that this is a solid one, two. We can get rid of this. That's just a measurement tool, right? So we, we take our measurement, delete it, because we don't fucking need it anymore. We got our spot, right? Now the next is this extension. And the real test is the break here. That's the real test. Because if we back out to our big frames, right? Five needs to break three in order to be a valid five. It has to go past it. So, you know, even here, although it's not as fun of a trade, you could play a breakout trade here. You could take a quick scout. Break here, bang, you know, because we expect at least to go here. So, you know, today, like if somebody wanted to just try, I mean, it's only 1.27%, but you could put a trailing stop of like 50 bucks and you could play like a 50x breakout right there if you wanted to try something fun on Elliott Wave. You but know, that means that you have to wait for the breakout for five to pass three in yes. order to take it, right? Yes. Now, this is not a what i recommend i just like if you guys want to put like a dollar on it right like today just like throw a dollar try it and see what happens you know I'm, just I'm pretty sure just for fun that, i'm pretty sure that actually trading something uh learns you so much instead of um, predicting it and not trading it yes absolutely I think, yeah i think it helps a lot so anyways it's my two cents on kind of basics of elliott wave today retracement extension you know all that stuff. So, Dude, hope super, it was helpful. Super helpful, man. Thank you, brother, man.
<clears throat> Good timing, so, too, because my lunch just got here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you use this now currently on uh, crypto only, or do you also use it on Forex or uh, commodities or indices or whatever? Um, no, yeah, you, you can use it on, on anything. Um, you know, uh, like I said, I don't like the, the five wave breakout. The, the, the real one is the three wave breakout. Okay. Yeah. Here, this would have been your, your breakout trade for a, a scalp. Um, yeah, you, you know, can even and see we, it on a time frame. The, the yeah. One, two. Yeah. You could have done it here too. You could yeah, have done exactly. a breakout of this, you know, and, and taking profits up here. So there's a lot of ways that you could play the breakouts, oh, wow. um, on these impulse waves. So there, there, there's no, uh, <coughs> it's just a simple way of doing it. So, but my lunch is here, guys. So I got to go. Appreciate everybody. All right, brother. Thanks, Thanks again, Tex. Hey, Thanks for listening, buddy. Yeah, yep. see you guys. All right, peace. All right. Oh, damn. That was screen is gone, so we can't uh, steal the, the levels. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, man. I'm out Can for the day, too, man. I'm going to be in and out. Um, Shit, yeah, let me stop the recording. I'll load this up for you guys that missed the first half. It's, dude, super, uh, super dope class, man. Like, everything.